Welcome to Tracks Through Time. I am your host and FreightWaves Deputy Editor, Brielle Jekyll, and I'm here to tell you about some of the most interesting stories throughout history and transportation uh, and freight. And I'm here with Mary O'Connell again, of course. Uh, And today we're getting into a mysterious case just in time for spooky season, Um, you know, because us millennial women love it just so much. Uh, And this time we're going down a true crime route that isn't too long ago in my eyes, but it did happen 28 years ago. Brielle, I am very excited about this. There's nothing that I love more than spooky season um, because, you know, it's just it's just kind of festive. It's fun. Um, You get to eat a lot of pumpkins. I just went to Trader Joe's and bought an obscene amount of pumpkin things. I am very excited about this, not because of the tale, horrible tale of murder, but honestly, there's nothing that a basic white lady loves more than a true crime story. A true crime. So, of course, let's get into it. I know, it's terrible. And at least this one, the victim isn't actually a, a, a female. So, um, But yeah, this is, uh, in all honesty, we're, we are having fun. It is spooky season, but this is a really sad case. Um, but there is a spooky element to it that I thought uh, would be interesting to take a look at. Um, so basically our story starts on Memorial Day weekend in 1995. Families and campers are celebrating in Arizona's Tonto National Forest, which is far away from the chaos of daily life. Um, but yet an unexpected and eerie event transpired in the middle of this serene landscape. A 10-ton semi-truck driven by 29-year-old truck driver Devin Williams careened through the woods narrowly missing an SUV. Lynn Yarrington, an eyewitness to the case, described the chilling encounter in an episode of Unsolved Mysteries that uh, covered the case. She said that the trucker showed no emotion, no intention of stopping, and no concern for the frightened campers in his path. It was a surreal, terrifying scene. So just imagine a giant truck carrying uh, strawberries and lettuce. Uh, It was a reefer truck just barreling down this national forest on a dirt road that's narrow, um, you know, as narrow as narrow can be. And he's just erratically driving at people. One couple was in a car and they they he showed no concern that he almost hit hit them. I'm going to say something right now. I don't have to imagine it because I will never be in a forest because if I have learned anything about true crime, that is that you do you know, stay out of the forest, stay out of the forest, because that's where you get murdered. That's where you get to die. But just stay out of the forest. I also don't like the fact that he's bringing reefer frat freight into it because, you know, as as a cold chain person, what did the reefer ever do to you, man? Yeah, I surprised you with that one. Yeah. Uh, but we need to have a talk later because you need to experience wood sometimes without fear of dying. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, every time you see, you hear about something, someone goes into the forest and they die or they get buried in the forest. Like, so it's just stay sexy and stay out of the forest to quote the, uh, to quote the, the, uh, my favorite murder ladies. We are going to look this up because I guarantee you a lot more murders happen in, in urban area. <laughs> Correct. They all have their parking just... garages. I have a fear of parking garages as well, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. Spookier in the woods. That's what the thing is. But I also live in the middle of the Pine Barren, so I'm not one to talk. <laughs> My threshold is you know, low for that um, or high. Uh, so later that day, Charles Hall, who was another eyewitness, he stumbled upon the 18-wheeler stalled in a field. Uh, And when he asked the driver what he was doing back there with such a large truck, he couldn't get a clear response from the man. He simply muttered to himself. He kept muttering, they made me do it and I'm going to jail. Very scary. So Hall's mind raced with thoughts of a hostage situation. You know, he thought maybe there was a hijacking or even a jailbreak. The trucker, seemingly in distress, made no effort to seek help or explain what was happening. Um, and as far as Hall knew, he he was expecting uh, the driver to hold him at gunpoint because of what he was saying and, and you know, the incoherent mumbling. Um, and then, uh, so basically, that guy left, Hall left, uh, and the driver and the, and the truck uh, was still in the woods. And... Uh, the next twist came when Deputy Dean Wills responded to a report of a stranded 48-foot semi in the forest. So now it's completely stuck in mud. 
And so he shows, so he gets a call for this truck stuck in the mud and abandoned. To his surprise, the cargo of that strawberry and lettuce I was telling you about was completely intact. The reefer unit was still running, but the driver was uh, conspicuously uh, absent. I feel like, how do you, if, if you're like the police, if you're like that sheriff and you get the phone call that there's a semi truck stuck in the mud in the middle of the woods, that's one of those where you're like, I'm sorry, what? What is actually happening? Um, because that is that is a lot. Also, the more impressive thing is that you are in the forest and all of that product stays completely fine and that, you know, wild animals don't somehow find a way to burrow in there because that is just wild animals dream, strawberries and lettuce, a whole truck full. I'm very surprised that it was remained intact. Well, it wasn't that long out there because everyone was so shocked. So it took me a little bit to kind of understand how strange this was because I live in the Pine Barrens, so like major trucking routes for us are like just in complete desolate, complete woods, like very creepy Jersey Devil kind of stuff. Um, but this was like a national for like a, a state park. So it was like there was camping, there was stuff like that. It's not it wasn't a major route. It was nothing like that. You you weren't supposed to take any kind of vehicle like this uh, down there. So it was it really, really stood out to these people. Um the inside of the truck's cap was immaculate. There was no signs of foul play. It was very tidy. But where was the driver? So around that time, the same man was seen again by a couple who stopped to ask if he needed help deep in the woods. Um, and he was without the truck and he was acting erratically again. He was making strange movements and he was again continuously muttering incoherently and they could not understand what he was saying. The only thing they could understand was that he said he needed to light the grill. And this is really, really strange. Um, but what he because what he was using to light the grill was a twenty dollar bill, no lighter. He was just trying to, I don't know, acting like he was using flint or something with a twenty dollar bill. And the grill itself that he referred to was actually a rock. <laughs> So this couple is just shows up to this man in the woods who's just, uh, yeah, trying to like light a grill that he says with a $20 bill and it's just a rock. Like it was just bizarre. So they were trying to ask if if he needed help, but he couldn't he wouldn't answer them. He wouldn't explain what was going on. Um, and then eventually he threw a rock at them. I'm not sure if it was the rock that was the grill rock or not. Um, but yeah, so they they decided to leave the situation because they um, were nervous. So um, yeah, and then after that, he there was no sightings of the man ever again. Um, and like I said before, that dr truck driver, his name was Devin Williams. It turns out we find out later, um, he's a devoted father of three uh, and a husband um, and they were very very happy and his behavior didn't align with vanishing into the forest at all he's also had um, a great history of working as a truck driver he was a he was a wonderful employee um, and six days before the crazy forest ride he left Kansas for a route a routine trip to the west um, and it was a route he'd taken countless times. So according to his boss, Tom Wilson, everything totally seemed normal. Um, you know, he picked up his his um, cargo on time um, and then he set off on his way back. However, Devin's final call the night before his disappearance did raise some eyebrows. He complained of insomnia, but he remained determined to hit the road by Sunday morning. He was but by Sunday morning, he was racing through the Tonto National Forest, far from any highway. But no one knew why. Like I said, it wasn't on the route. Um, but he did definitely wanted to get home by Sunday because he wanted to spend the holiday with his family. So it was very clear he was distressed about that. Um, and he hadn't gotten good sleep before that. And then he wanted to just keep driving, which, as we know now, it is is, is very... Um, uh, a major issue in driving right now. Hours of service limits exist for a reason. <laughs> yeah. Well, suspicion initially fell on Devin's behavior, which was described as disoriented and incoherent. Some speculated that he might have been under the influence of drugs. Um, but according to Tom Wilson, there was no history. 
You know, he routinely had to check in for drug tests and he always passed. And his family, you know, believes that he never used drugs. However, that isn't to say if he he could have taken, you know, just because he's passed drug t- tests in the past doesn't mean that on this particular day he didn't take something. Um, but there's just not a lot of evidence to show that. Um, Devin's wife, Mary Lou Williams, she firmly believes that some something sinister happened uh, to her husband because they, the couple had recently bought a house and they were really experiencing a peak in their happiness, she said. And, and she gave an interview with uh, Unsolved Mysteries and, and she said the same thing. Um, Devin deviating from his route and behaving irrationally was entirely out of character for him. They had never seen him do anything like this before or even close um, search efforts, uh, including foot patrols, canine units, rescue teams, it all yielded no trace of Devin. Hunters and hikers in the in the vicinity never reported um, even a fragment of bone or a piece of clothing. Nothing. It was as if the forest had swallowed him whole. That is absolutely but terrifying. Then, and yeah, yet another reason only- to stay out of the forest. The only thing that was left behind was the truck. Uh, you know. And almost two years after Devin's uh, disappearance, we did finally have a break in the case. Um, hikers stumbled upon a human skull just a half a mile from where he was last seen. And deco- dental records did confirm that it was Devin Williams. Um, but the cause of his death and the circumstances surrounding his strange behavior still remain a chilling unsolved mystery. That is absolutely terrifying and i feel like that sounds so like ludicrous it feels like it should be like on an episode of like bones the like the old fox show um where they you know solve crazy crimes like this that is absolutely bonkers like just one day there's a skull that's it i i know it's so sad for his family too who has no answers at all But so what could have led Devin Williams, a loving husband and father, to veer off his route into the dark depths of the Tonto National Forest? So while his widow does believe uh, it was foul play, most people believe that it was not, in fact, foul play. But instead, it was likely a tragic health episode. Um, There are a lot of theories out there floating around that it could have been an, an undiagnosed diabetes episode. Um, And that caused like because the insomnia, you know, a lot of the times truckers are don't live the healthiest life on the road because it can be difficult. Um, So he might have had this undiagnosed diabetes and then and then had um, one of those episodes um, which can can cause delusions before you fall into a um, medical coma or or, I'm sorry, uh, not a medical coma, a a diabetic coma. Um, so that's one theory that that could have happened to him. Uh, and like I said, uh, a lot of people went to drug use, but there was not really a lot of evidence to show that. Um, and then we land on our most outlandish theory. And this is where we get into the wooey, wooey, spooky area. So um, and that is, of course, he was kidnapped by aliens. So It turns out he disappeared nearby what's known as the Travis Walton incident, which is a very infamous or famous story, depending on how you feel about it, uh, in uh, ufology, where uh, Travis Walton was working on a logging crew in Apache Sitgrees National Forest, which is nearby Tonto, um, and he went missing for five days. He showed up... um, he, he all of a sudden his sister after five days his sister receives a phone call from travis and he's at a payphone. um and after he reappeared he told the story that resembled a classic alien abduction story he said that he saw a beam of light around him right before he lost consciousness and then he was transported to a hospital-like room um and he had these beings around him which in the ufology world are known as short grays um and they're that traditional alien type but yeah so that story kind of took off in the um uh you know alien world and so a lot of people think that it's the same thing <laughs> but, I mean, uh, but if that's it was, just- if it was alien abduction then why would just just his skull be around you know like 
if they aliens were unless they're like beam me up scotty machine was broken and like they went to go beam them down and yeah it was botched they probably botched it must have been a system update that day (laughs) that's horrible um but no it's a really really sad story and i know that that's kind of like one of the more ridiculous you know plot points um but it's just really interesting and it was 20 years um before the travis walton incident took place 20 years before um devin williams disappeared so my money is more on that diabetic side um because if you you know have a hallucination if you have like a the i don't want to call it a hallucination but if you have an episode and then you go into a diabetic coma you know that would be that would explain why he disappeared he was un- like he was unresponsive nobody was able to find him um and unfortunately in the forest wild animals are going to do what they do and that would explain why there would just be a skull either way it is it is absolutely a horrible way to go yeah they do they firmly believe that um the the reason why only his skull was found was because of the elements and and animals out in the the forest there because obviously that happens a lot and a lot of similar stories have happened where it seems like something crazy happened but really it was just animals um you know and somebody had died from natural causes um, so it could be natural causes, it could have been exposure, um, or it could have been aliens. But either way, it's extremely sad, um, and I I do really feel bad for his um, his wife. Yeah, that's not a that's not a fun thing to do because I could not even imagine having to go on to unsolved mysteries and try and you know explain what potentially could have happened to your husband. Like that is that's that's not a good day. Yeah. Oh, and the diabetic theory did come from um, kind of forums online, um, just so everyone knows. <laughs> it didn't come from real hacking into the medical database. No, and it didn't come from police either. <laughs> um, I speaking of forums online, I have some. Um, I have I have tales for you from the forums online. Let's do it. Are you ready for it? Spooky season, baby. Well, it's spooky season, and as anyone with spooky season, you got to really lean into it, Um, whether that's, you know, haunted highways or whatever. But apparently, there is a entire, there's a pretty big section of the internet. Well, I don't know of the whole internet, but, you know, it wasn't hard to find something about this. Um, And that is truck drivers reporting and spotting strange things happening, whether they think it's a UFO or just you know animals acting weird there's a whole there's a whole tiktok side about it which I'm, i'll let everyone else kind of find that as they go down that rabbit hole um but out on the forums you know you'll see um there's been some drivers say that like yeah, they see things that aren't really there um they're not on, they they have made it a very clear point to say that they are not on drugs or doing dope um it's just around 2 a.m some strange stuff starts happening and a lot of people have linked it to what they think is um one guy specifically called it quote uh, i sometimes i think an alien invasion with the ufo um and you know they'll see something that was on national geographic and then suddenly it happens and um so there's a big strong contingent that there's an alien invasion happening around 2 a.m um but other times like you'll there won't be reflections of the roads it'll be no traffic it'll just be completely empty um there's no signal from a gps it's kind of like a a, like a like a dead zone area but you know gps in theory should work anywhere so it's really um just kind of fascinating to see kind of what other people have reported that they see or they don't see um but something about 2 a.m man if you're out on the highway is like it's a little spicy I know. Next episode, I think we're going to do some haunted highway talk. Um, I love those. There's actually, uh, actually, I'll save it for the next one, but there's allegedly one by me that involves flour. Flour? Like bags of flour. Yeah. It's a good time. Is it a cargo truck? Because then that would be a great story to tell. No, it's not. I don't think it is. No. <laughs> Yeah, there's a few by me too. We have we often have uh, a few gravity hills too, which are where you park and then it it brings you uphill instead of down when you put it into neutral. Very spooky. Um, but how many uh, how many aliens are out there on the road with these truckers? 
I mean, if we believe men in black a lot, you know, I like mm-hmm. to think that men in black is, you know, kind of, kind of I like to think it's the real world, um, except I know it's not. But you never know, because if you have some that, you know, can just take on a personality or a persona of a human um, I don't know. I think I think there could be a few. There's definitely uh, if the men in black scene about the post office is to be, is to be believed, the post office should be rife with them. I know, right? We should get uh, Justin Martin from uh, he from let the truck yeah, come shared, on here and tell us. I've <laughs> shared my post office conspiracy theories with him, and he says they're not far off. <laughs> Ooh, I think Men in Black is is really just a document. No, the truth is the real men in black are very, very, very scary. They're very pale. They have no lips. It's very spooky. Well, look it up. What are the real men in black? They're it, 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 there's the, there's stories of people who, if they see weird alien stuff, within the following weeks they'll get visited by these creepy men in black, and they're like really scared. They're cut, like remind me of Slender Man, and they're like. They have like no lips and they're pale and they wear hats and, and they and they talk strange and stuff. So okay. it's there's a whole world out there, Mary. Yeah, you have no idea. I about. clearly <laughs> need to get down to the alien side of the uh, of the war of the internet. I have only just scratched the surface apparently with truck drivers thinking that they saw UFOs land on highways. <laughs> yeah, well, there is a tons of stories of truck drivers thinking they've seen like aliens, and and so I I just always think how interesting how like connected to trucking aliens actually like the alien world is. Um, I mean, it makes sense because you have you have drivers who are out at all hours of the night, and the you know whether it's sleep deprivation or just you know if they're listening to a podcast or they had just been watching something about aliens or anything like that. You know, the mind plays tricks on you, especially when you're at the highway alone at night. I don't know. I kind of like it. You want to be abducted? I do not want to be abducted. No, I would like to stay firmly on the Earth. I don't even want to go to Mars or the moon. I would like to just stay on the Earth. (laughs) Um, All right. Well, welcome to spooky season. (laughs) What a way to kick off spooky season. (laughs) Oh, we're so we are goofy here. Um, but basically that is the end of our episode today. Thank you for everyone for tuning in. And again, I do just want to say, um, you know, our condolences to the family. And if anyone has any information, um, about the disappearance of Devin Williams, you know, please reach out to the police station, um, in Arizona, um, you know, and, and, you know, maybe give some answers to his family, unfortunately. Um, and thank you to Unsolved Mysteries and um, all of the police reports that we were able to get our information from. And like always, you can follow me on Twitter at Jake O'Brien to see what else we have going on at FreightWaves Classics. And you can email me at bjakel at FreightWaves.com and tune in in two weeks for our next episode on FreightWaves TV or listen to the show wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome through 